just another quick little update on what's going on in here the uh, insulation is all finished and I'm still waiting for the carpenter to have time to come and put the drywall on the ceiling and I'm working outside this door right now and the reason why is because when I was working on the insulation uh, over here I had part of this wall opened up a little bit and I found water or, or wet insulation inside there and um, the reason why let me let me jump down here the reason why is because when the carpenter put that door in he didn't finish I don't remember if he was in a hurry to leave and get on another job or if um, or if I told him I was going to finish it I don't remember but this was left open the siding was left open and hanging you see this piece here that's bent well I had several that were a lot worse than that this one I can caulk back up and this little hole here but see this siding is all going to get replaced um, before too awful long so all I got to do is get it up to where to keep the weather out of it for the moment and I wasn't thinking of doing a video on it but all of this siding was off and down here to the bottom and several pieces were just hanging off of there and bent and broken from the wind and the storms coming through um, and I started putting the siding back up I didn't have any J channel that's this stuff here I didn't go with my dump truck to get it I took my little Ranger so that's why it's got a little wrinkle in there because I don't really care um, it's it's no biggie I just folded the stuff in half and stuck it in the back so that's what's going on with this when we do the new siding uh, since that's the west over there that's where the, the storms come from I don't know people in other parts of the country or the other parts of the world the storms may move another direction but here in the Midwest and the states the storms about 95% of the time are moving eastbound so they're coming from that direction and they're blowing into the siding like this well the practice is to overlap your siding in the direction that when you are walking towards the front door or there's any light um, where the light is usually coming from a certain direction if there are electric lights or whatever the case might be to where you hide your overlap you don't see the shadow of your overlap so your overlapped piece is on is on your side as you're walking towards so that you don't see the shadow like you do from this direction but the bad thing about that is the storm comes from the west and it's going to blow and these are going to flutter and water is going to get in there uh, so when we put the new siding up we're going to go backwards with the direction of the overlap just to keep the the rain out that is what I'm doing I might put a uh, the camera on a tripod and get a little of this I don't know I'm not I'm not a carpenter I don't like doing siding I pull it off to do a repair job or something like that put it back I, I know enough about it to do it but it's not what I like to do so maybe I won't do it on camera but anyway that's my little catch up for the moment I got uh, got a, a new um, porch light that's going on there and I have to get a, uh, a mounting box they call it a, a J box it's like this one here uh, this porch light was already mounted and I'm going to put it up here the same as that one is because this is a new door we took a window out and added that door in okay I got all that siding patched back up cut up all the last of the pieces and um, found a place to put them all um, still have a wire sticking out where is it there it is I'm gonna do 
a box, an electric box that goes on top of the siding. I see them on Amazon as long as I know exactly what kind of siding I got and um, they have a very limited selection of those at Home Depot. Um, I don't know if you guys in UK and Australia or whatnot have Home Depot but uh, that's our our big what they call box store for uh, home supplies that's one of our bigger ones we got three or four of them here where I live and Home Depot is the closest one to me we got a Lowe's and a little farther away and a little farther than that we got a Menards anyway um, on Amazon they uh, they have one that mounts right on top of the siding you just screw it in place you feed your wire through it put a clamp on it Romax clamp and then you uh, screw the box down and it's cut out to fit over those ridges on the siding and uh, when we redo the siding and all the uh, insulation that I didn't do from the inside and the fiber board on the out when we redo all that I'll put this what they call a J box it's got like a J channel built in around the box and you put that on first and then you put your siding on over it we'll do that uh, next time around so that the lights will be the same and the front porch light looked just like this one um, I'm going to clean it up and fix it like I did that one and I'm going to put it back here so that both the lights are the same back here and then I'll get two new ones of whatever style I happen to choose for the two doors in the front going to add one more piece to this uh, little catch-up video I finished putting my ground in on my electric I didn't have that on and um, here in this box I didn't change the box or I would have put a bigger one in so I just put these double breakers in to uh, add more circuits and divide things up a little better than what it was originally there's all my new wires that I ran here's a couple of older wires that I reused um, there's a 10-3 here that goes to the water heater and here's a I don't know what gauge this one is it say on there it says 10-2 right here and that's for the air conditioner this, this one outside here the compressor and here's a two a, t a 12 two that uh, that goes out to the uh, living room outlets and I found that wire under the siding and reused it and here's the uh, the kitchen sink GFIs that are right here I didn't put the outlets back in these two here because we're gonna take this window out and um, just frame up the wall or you know there's no view out here and I need cabinet space more than I need a window that has no view so uh, when we drywall this we'll put the outlets back in there anyway the, the ground is uh, this piece of pipe right here we brought a piece of solid wire up put it in that ground bar there I added a new ground bar on this side because I didn't have a place to put my my ground wires with all these extra circuits that I added in so I joined the two grounds together with a piece of this um, wire here and then this uh, this loop here goes around that comes in with my three power lines from the pole outside that comes in with that and that's a law that got around here it's a fairly new law um, that's because if you don't have the, your um, if you're using plastic pipe which I did going outside underground to the pole then uh, you have to have an extra ground wire grounding this box to the box out there on the pole uh, I guess I kind of agree with it since you're assembling everything that way you know it's the time to do it but if it's not done it certainly doesn't hurt anything it's harmless to not have the two boxes grounded together 
if you have your um, your uh, the solid wire here, if you have that grounded outside, then uh, it serves the same purpose. And um, <clears throat> actually, it does kind of help, really, because if you ever lose a neutral, that does kind of help bypass the lost neutral because you don't want to lose a neutral if you have a loose connection your your lights will every time something heavy turns on it's going to pull all the power to that side and then the other side the lights will dim on the other side and it causes all kinds of confusion in the electric system anyway underneath here I got our um, wire coming out of the box right here it goes through my uh, my ground bar which is an eight foot bar that's hammered into the ground and then it comes back up onto my gas pipe and then it finals right here on the frame with uh, a little lug right there that I ground off a spot come on focus ground off a spot of rust there and drilled a or put a self-threading bolt through and that is my uh, Finishing up on, on my electric. <coughs> now I did something I'm not supposed to do years ago. I buried some trees here about where this mobile home was sitting. And um, are some large tree parts that I had uh, cut down, some large cottonwood trees. And I buried them and they're down deep, but I think I ran into one of them. And I, I really had trouble hammering that ground bar and I was out to about here about four feet of it sticking out and I was wondering am I gonna cut this ground bar off and just use it leave it short or hammer another one in somewhere else next to it and join two of them together um, anyway it took me a while to get that thing any farther I went and got a bigger sledgehammer and I knocked it down deeper with that hammer and wasn't getting anywhere fast I was getting sore and tired swinging that sledgehammer and kept missing and, and anyway I came out here and got this big jackhammer this electric jackhammer from Harbor Freight and that thing is heavy it weighs about 70 or 80 pounds and, uh, and I brought that over there. It plugs into 110 and got myself in a position where I could get this this thing comes with a couple of uh, you know great big rods for um, you know big chisels but uh, I didn't use those of course they just go into a hole in the bottom of this thing and I used that jackhammer to finish hammering that thing down and it um, it worked it did the job it did a good job so I'm almost finished with the electric underneath all I got to do is kind of tie up this wire to the uh, air conditioner got to tie that up and make it look a little better and uh, there's just a few little loose ends like the gas pipe is uh, hanging on hangers but it, it could be a little more secure than what it is but um, yeah we're done pretty much with that